and we are in Grand Cru County here. Yeah? Trying to get it, I was fresh EA. And this place is a town on the offshore of Barclay Bay called Philokin. In order to arrive there, you have to navigate this park, and there's the only route. Afrobarometer does public attitude surveys in Africa. When you hear the word surveys, you might think of phone interviews or online polls. For Afrobarometer, that's not quite how it works. Since 1999, Afrobarometer has interviewed more than a quarter million Africans in 38 countries about their experiences and evaluations of quality of life, governance, democracy, and other topics. That means our national partners have sent teams to more than a quarter million African homes, no matter where they are. A two-day hike away in the outback of Madagascar or the mountains of Lesotho, in the slums of Lagos, or the gated communities of Johannesburg, in unstable or conflict zones, in the flooded backcountry of Zambia or Liberia. Why? Because to make the voices of average citizens count in public policymaking, Afrobarometer is committed to getting reliable data that is truly representative of each country's population. So we use a scientific method that gives every adult citizen in every region of the country, in remote rural areas, as well as in cities, the same chance of being interviewed. From that list, we randomly select a set number of enumeration areas. Some areas will be within driving distance. Others may be days away by a car, by bus, on foot, by canoe. Every one of our teams could tell stories about every one of their surveys. Here, we can only share a few. One of our, our, our uh, team members, Francis from Uganda, he was down in Zambia uh, monitoring some field work and, and just helping oversee the implementation of the survey there. And he was out in the field with one of the Zambian teams in a remote rural area. And they were trying to get to their uh, site where they were supposed to, to do their interviews. And they came across a bridge over a river that was too broken down to use. It was, there was still some structure there, but they could not get across it. We decided to press on and uh, go take a look at the bridge and see um, if we could fix it. I banked on my engineering training and uh, rallied the team and, and uh, we got uh, assistance from the community. There were um, many men and children who were willing to assist. They came with cutting equipment some axes, pangas, and uh, the bridge, the broken bridge was in the middle of a forest, so we were able to cut down uh, logs and trees and collected some strappings from the forest that we used to tie together uh, logs and trees, branches, to make our makeshift bridge. Um, we were you know, not so sure it would work because the logs were all wet, and at one point, as we attempted to drive our field vehicle over the bridge, uh, we feared that the vehicle could actually fall into uh, the water. But luckily, we managed. Uh, we drove the car across. We made it to the other side safely. Our team was able to work in the two villages as assigned. And we used the other road to travel back to Minilunga successfully. At times, Afrobarometer survey teams have some very close calls. During our Round 6 survey in Kenya, for example, a team was to survey three districts in the far northeast near the Somalian border, a region known for criminal and terrorist activity, where buses move in convoys with police or military escort. One of the five team members missed the bus in Nairobi, so about halfway to their final destination, the other four team members got off to wait for him, letting their bus go on without them. As they were waiting, about 10 in the morning, there was 
a curfew, there were assailants, there were military operations, there were police operations in Wajia. And, what, and, and, and ambulances and assailants and a lot of security activity. And when, it, when they went to inquire what exactly had happened, it turned out that the bus that they had come with from Nairobi, the bus that they had decided to disembark from to wait for their, their colleague that had remained in Nairobi, that bus had, bus had been ambushed by the Al Shabaab, who had laid an ambush along the way between Wajia and, 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 and Mandela. A number of people were killed in that particular bus, including some of the police officers who were escorting the bus to Mandela. During ensuing military operations in the area, the national partner was able to get the team back to Nairobi on a UN helicopter. After monitoring the security situation for a few days, they decided to head back out to the three districts as planned. Not all our trips are quite so dramatic. Sometimes you just have to go with the flow. As one of our round six teams discovered, when they were sent to a village in northern Malawi that could only be reached by boat. Four of our five team members had never been on a boat before. They asked if they could substitute a place that was easier to get to. But of course the national investigator said no, if this enumeration area has been selected and it is in Malawi, then you have to go there. So anyway, they hired a boat um, and it took them about six hours to actually get to the town of, of Mamroe on the water. Uh, they got there, they did their interviews, and then on their way back, just about two hours while they were on, on the boat, it turned out that the boat had run out of petrol. So they were stuck in the middle of the water, um, pre most likely very few, if any of them, could swim. And, and naturally, I think they started to panic. And I should have mentioned that they actually also had a police officer escort them uh, on, the, on, on the boat. So when they were heading back and they'd run out of gas, uh, they tried to flag some boats that were passing by. And because they had this police officer in uniform, the other boats didn't want to stop because they may be worried that we, um, <laughs> I don't know whether they didn't have even have the permits to be uh, to be on the lake. So anyway, they eventually had to rely, I think, on on just uh, the waves on the lake to push them. And I think it took it ended up taking them like nine hours to to eventually get back to to, to the shore uh, on the other side of the lake. Safely back from their face-to-face -face interviews. Each survey team brings thousands of data points which Afrobarometer will compile, analyze and disseminate to policymakers, journalists, activists and scholars all over the world. This is how the voices of African citizens are heard in the halls of power helping to shape policies that affect their lives. This is what makes Afrobarometer the world's leading source of reliable data on what Africans are thinking. Behind the data, we must never forget, are the citizens who agree to share their opinions with us, and the women and men who go to every corner of the continent to ask citizens what they think. <laughs>